So we're going to be exploring the element of reasoning questions, and we're going to burrow into this a bit and see how we can use questions in ways we don't tend to, we can employ uh, questions in deeper ways so that we can uh, think better across the domains of our lives. Mm -hmm. So let's start, if we could, Gerald, with the, the, the role of questions in human life. How do you view the role of questions in human life? Well, uh, I view questions as essential. I, I could almost say the most essential part of reasoning about life, but I would probably have to take it back. That's too sweeping, but it's at least, it's at least essential. Um, questions are what drive our reasoning and thus our, and to the extent that reasoning drives our lives, questioning underlies everything. So without questions, there's nothing for me to explore or investigate or think about. I at first have to see it kind of as a question, something to look for. And one thing that seems important to me about that is the difference between having questions ex explicitly and having questions only implicitly in the, in the back of our minds. Um, so for instance, when, when my son Matt was, uh, was an adolescent he wanted to learn about how to how to navigate an airport and get on the right flight and everything like that and uh i could have taught him and in a way i did some of that but what i asked him to do is to, to ask himself so what questions should i be asking at any particular moment right mm -hmm. and that helped him a lot because that meant he was formulating the question asking it and then finding out answers or partial answers to the questions. So if you just think about going through an airport, you're confronting questions all over the place. Where is my flight? What line do I stand in? How do I get through airport security in the quickest possible way? Uh, you're confronting all kinds of questions, but most of the time, much of the time, those questions are just unarticulated. They're just way inside us. And so we go through kind of on autopilot. And an assumption I make is that by and large, most of the time, the more explicit our questions are, the better. So I see questions as underlying all aspects of our lives. And with reasoning through aspects of our lives, it's very important for the questions to be explicit, articulated, to the extent that I can do that. So. And by the way, your example uh, of uh, working with your son, focused on working with your son, reminded me of the example of Socrates. Uh -huh. the, what Socrates, I believe, in part was doing was trying to create methodologies for questioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was trying to figure out how do we get to the best answers? Mm -hmm. And it seems to me, I'm Socrates mm -hmm. uh, for the moment, it seems to me that the best way to get to the best answers is through the best questions. Right, yeah. And his way of teaching, which was fundamentally through inquiry, right, is something that we should really study as, as teachers, as instructors. Because in other words, imagine a, a, a K through 12 school system whose fundamental, one of their fundamental purposes is to teach students how to ask the kinds of questions you are helping your son learn to ask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a routine um, matter of fact. In right. other words, what we do here is we, we focus on questions. Right. What we do in the school is we teach you how to ask good questions. Mm -hmm. We're more concerned about your questions than we are about your answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we, we want to make sure you know how to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You know when to ask a given question and when to not ask a given question. Uh, so mm -hmm. that, that, that example of Socrates comes back again and again to me. Yeah, and I'm glad you said, especially about the, the 
teaching part that one of the things we're doing is teaching students to ask questions. And there are, in my experience, there questions fall into a large number of varieties, but here are two. Many times we, I could get my students to ask questions in the class, like about the discipline or about what we're studying or what, what, about what an author means. And there I could focus on what makes it a good question. Like what's the author's main point is a, is a good question. And what reasons or evidence does the author give to support her main point? Those are also very good questions. They're good questions because they go to the heart of the matter. And that's a lot of what it is I was teaching. But there's a very different sense, quite different sense, I think, of what it means to ask a good question. And I'd say that at the, at the, at the root, what makes something a good question is it's a question I really want to know the answer to. <laughs> and I have a feeling that at school, uh -huh. a lot of the time, students are asking questions be or teachers who promote question asking are asking questions because they're in that school mode. They're in the questioning mm -hmm. mode in class, but that's different from really caring about what the answer to that question is. Um, uh, yeah, so. Yes. Uh, yeah. I There's want, a lot of yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I want students to be interested in the in the subjects we're we're learning about. Uh, I can't always control that, and questions often provoke that. But still, there are some pro forma questions that students ask. Well, I want to yeah, I want to jump in there because you said I think you said that their students tend to be asking the questions that they're supposed to be asking, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering whether you could even say that they're asking the questions. Right. In other words, they're not really asking the questions in this case. They're actually just answering the questions that have been formulated for them. Indeed. But the important questions that you face in life are not going to be formulated for you. They're going to be formulated by your by you. And if you're not formulating those important questions, yeah, how that, are you living your life? 